A long time ago, in fact, a very long time ago, when I was 19, I met a young man who was doing his national service at RAF Buchan. And we started going out together. I soon found out that he would be leaving the RAF in four weeks' time and going back to Cornwall. And so we mo made the most of the time that we had left together. Lionel came to see me in Aberdeen because I was a student at the university there and I went home at weekends to see him. The time soon passed, four weeks soon passed, and when it was time for him to leave, we agreed to write to each other, and so began a courtship by correspondence. The following summer, I was invited to go and stay in Cornwall with Lionel's family. I knew Lionel was a churchgoer, but that was no problem, because I went to church regu regularly myself. His church was a Methodist country chapel, and I quickly realized it was di very different to what I had been accustomed to. The people there, even the young people, spoke about the Lord as if he were their friend. And it was so different to what I'd been accustomed to, and I couldn't relate to that. I was out of my depth. Not that I would have admitted it, but I didn't fool anybody. There was a different preacher each Sunday, but they all had something in common. They preached the gospel, and practically every Sunday evening, there was an appeal for people to be saved from their sins. Well, I didn't feel very sinful, and I could think of a lot of people who were more in need of being saved than I was. Because you see, in my ignorance and pride, I wasn't aware of the text in the Bible, in Romans, that says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As time went on, I began to feel more uncomfortable in the services, but I wasn't prepared to do anything about it. After all, how would I tell my friends in Aberdeen when I went back there? What would they say? How would I cope? When it was time for me to leave Cornwall, Lionel gave me his Bible and asked me to read it every day. I agreed and I fulfilled my promise. The following March, Lionel came to Peterhead for my 21st birthday, and we made a big mistake. We became engaged. <laughs> I didn't know at that time about the seriousness of the problem of being unequally yoked. The following summer, I returned to Cornwall and went to chapel on Sunday as usual. The preacher that first Sunday was a Welshman named John Thomas. And his text in the evening was, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And that was exactly what I was doing. I felt more uncomfortable than I'd ever felt before. But I was unwilling to humble myself under the mighty hand of God as the scripture tells us to do. There was an after-church rally at a neighbouring village, but I flatly refused to go. I had had enough that day. I wasn't going to listen to any more of that kind of preaching. Lionel had no choice but to go because he was leading a group of young people and transporting them around in a van which had been provided by his Christian boss specifically for that purpose. Lionel seemed really disappointed when I said I wasn't going, but I was adamant. And so I asked him to take me back to his mum's house. 
about an hour later, Lionel reappeared and said he had to speak to me. We drove to a quiet place and through tears, he asked me if I believed. When I said I did, he asked me why I didn't want to be saved. Well, at that point, all the barriers were broken down. And Lionel led me to the Lord. We prayed together and cried together, but the tears were tears of joy. You see, my my conversion was the result of faithful Christians in Scotia Chapel praying for me. Most of them have gone to be with the Lord now, but I'll be eternally grateful to them. On the night I became a Christian, I made the best and most important decision I have ever made in my life. I found a friend who sticks closer than a brother and is always there for me in any and every situation. I don't know how I would manage without the Lord of my life because I go to him when I'm happy and when I'm sad and I run to him when I'm troubled and anxious. He knows all about me, all my faults and failings, and he still loves me. He's a prayer answering God and he's my savior. Tonight, if you don't know him, I would wholeheartedly recommend him to you. Don't try and run away, as I tried to do. The verse I would like to leave with you is in Psalm 68, verse 19. And it was a verse that came up in one of our daily readings this past week. And it says, Praise be to the Lord, to God our Saviour, who daily bears our burdens.